Hello everyone and welcome. Today's an exciting day and that's because we finally got the Razer OS VR in the office. We're going to unbox it right now and show you what's inside. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. All right, well, this took a lot of self-control, a lot of self-control to not just rip it open, go through the box, connect it, and get it going. Um, just received this now. It's a little bit after 8 in the morning, uh, and FedEx was actually quite quick with it. Interesting note, uh, where this actually shipped out from is here in California. So if you live in California, you get it pretty quick. I ordered it on the standard free shipping, and I got it in three days which is awesome. But if you live on the East Coast, it's probably gonna be more like five days shipping. Uh, but they do give standard shipping three to five days, so I was actually pretty lucky in this draw finally. But yeah, let's get into it. I got my knife here, and uh, we're just gonna get going. If you notice on the front of that knife, I actually <laughs> broke the tip off a long time ago. It still works though. This hobby knife is still, still pretty sharp, still pretty good. So we are going to tear into this box and see how it comes and what it comes with because they're not really clear on their website exactly as far as what you get. Um, now, if you don't know what a Razer OS VR is, uh, you, should, you should look it up. I'm gonna give you some brief specs, but the OS VR is a open sourced, hackable uh, VR headset. It is created by Razer, basically for the tweaking community, people that like to get things running and get things working um, basically on their own. Uh, it is a lot less than the other options that are out there now. It's about the same price, maybe a little bit less than the DK2, but from the experiences that I'm reading about, uh, a lot of people had better experiences than with the DK2. They say that not only through construction, but through the screen quality itself. They actually feel that it's a better experience than the DK2. I'm not expecting CV1 quality, especially with video quality, because the screen resolution is not there. Uh, essentially, per eye, you're getting, I believe it's 920 by 1080 per eye, which isn't bad, but it's not going to be CV1 quality from the Oculus or HTC Vive quality. Uh, but what this actually gives you is an upgradable kit. So what I mean by that is everything that Razer is putting into this OS VR is upgradable. So anyone that has the original iteration of this, the 1.1, can buy the screens and buy the IR uh, head tracking display unit um, and upgrade to this current generation. So if they theoretically <laughs> come out with another one that has a better screen or a dual display, I should be able to just buy that display, take this one out, unscrew the front plate, slap in the new display, and look, now I have a much better system. They have a 150 degree or is, yeah, 150 degree FOV lens that is coming out that I should just be able to purchase and slap into this one. So it's pretty neat. It's an upgradable unit and that's something I like. I like tweaking things and getting things to work. Um, you know, taking things apart if need be. I don't just, if it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, um, you know, I like getting things to work. So it doesn't bother me at all taking this apart and being that it's made to do so. And it's just, that's perfect for me. It was just a perfect, perfect headset. And being that it's much cheaper than the other VR counterparts out there, I was willing to give it a shot, especially to see how it works with sim racing. So here we go, we're gonna take the, the box out of a box. And here we are, hopefully I'm holding this right side up, let me see. Uh, yes I am. So you can see OS VR open source virtual reality. So uh, they did kind of, they did kind of say on their last uh, YouTube uh, interview, I believe it was from Tested, I believe is when they said it, that they are working with partners and basically, you know, this is 
one iteration of this headset. They're working with partners that are taking this headset and going on with it and basically making their own version of this headset. So should be interesting to see what other headsets come from this one here. Um, but yeah, let's crack this open and see what's inside. All right, everyone. So yeah, let's check out what's inside this box and see how it's packaged. Again, this is the main box, the OSVR um, Razer headset. You can see I already cut the tape there. Let's check it out. Check it out. All right. So first impressions looks like everything is packaged really well, really tight. Uh, the headset's completely encased in foam. Um, the headset itself looks like it has a heck of a lot of foam for where it actually attaches to your head. But let's not go there yet. Uh, first booklet here says OSVR Hacker Dev Kit. And on the back is a quick start guide. Um, just a quick little picture. It looks like A is the uh, power supply kit. B is the IR positional tracking camera with stand. Uh, kind of just shows you where to place everything in the room, where to connect everything to. C is, of course, your computer. D is a belt box. The belt box. Uh, e is the uh, head-mounted display module. Um, and then you have F, the IR positional tracking sensor box. And you can see how they want you to basically get it all set up in your room. Hopefully you can see that and it's not too blurry. All righty. So that's that. And then next, we have another booklet. It says OSVR Hacker Dev Kit on it. Now this one here is the actual book. Um, upon initial impressions, I'm gonna say it looks pretty darn easy to read. Uh, everything in here has really big pictures, nice big color, well, not really colorful, but where it matters, they have like little orange markers on everything, you know, the, the normal razor color brands of, uh, especially the OSVR, the 1.3 having orange. So you have nice big colors, basically shows everything you need. Looks like on every page you have between uh, three and five steps. And there's not many pages in here, which is nice and refreshing to see. It's not like a, uh, a booklet that looks like an encyclopedia, really small text. You get nice big pictures, everything is clearly labeled and explained, strict, concise. What is that? Oh, additional links skip past that but that's pretty much the end of the instructions right there and then it talks about the limited warranty so you can see it really wasn't much right there you can see how it shows where is it right there how to put it if you're doing it on a laptop uh, basically where to connect it to and whatnot but pretty easy read it's nice and refreshing not to get an instructions manual that you know just looks kind of crazy with really small text little piece of cardboard so this box here is the IR positional tracking kit so let's see I would, I'm imagining this is gonna be the camera all right I'm right so in the box here we have this little stand I guess for the camera but it looks like one of those little bendy tripod sort of stands that you can bend the legs however you want to Oop. Just broke the bottom off of that one. Uh, looks like it's just a little rubber. Where'd it go? There we go. It's a little rubber foot that pops off and pops on the bottom. Just comes right off. Yep, they just pop on and pop off. No big deal. No harm done, didn't break it. I'm pretty clumsy and I'm known to break things so. Um, but yeah, the legs just kind of bend every which way. Um, be interesting to see if this will work with camera accessories, like normal camera accessories, because <laughs> I might find a way to rig this onto my uh, Track IR5 uh, sensor stand and kind of use this for my own cameras, but pretty neat. Then you also have a micro USB uh, cable. It's a pretty thick cable um, of the thickness of like OEM camera cables like a Samsung Galaxy camera cable very thick um, doesn't feel like it's gonna break at all so that's pretty nice and then we have the actual camera itself 
So on the back it says open source virtual reality IR positional tracking camera. Um, pretty small camera, it's about half the size of a credit card and actually it's kind of funny because if you have a track IR5 the first thing you're going to notice it's very similar into size and shape of the track IR5. You know I have my track IR5 right here. Let's see if I can hold it up where you might be able to see it. It's still connected to my rig so I can't, <laughs> I'm not going to rip it out of my rig. But um, I'm going to hold the two up together and you can kind of see they're very similar in size and shape. Now the track IR5 sensor is also an IR blaster. So you have that mirrored front there, whereas this is just a camera because the IR lights are inside the headset itself, much like the Oculus and whatnot. But uh, yeah, yeah, so this is an IR blaster and camera, but you can see it's very similar in size and shape. They both kind of have a, a curved look to it, probably to achieve that FOV that they're looking to get. Um, should be interested to see what is the required distance from you for this being that the IR blasters are in the headset itself. Um, I did see in one of their shows through Tested, um, well, one of their interviews through Tested, I should say, they did have these sensors up on the walls kind of far, and they had two of them, much like the uh, HTC Vive, um, and it was quite a ways away. So it should be able to track you from quite a distance. You shouldn't be restricted to a certain distance, much like you are with the Track IR5. Um, We'll see, we'll see. Now there isn't a lot of information of this headset being used with like iRacing or Assetto Corsa, so I am a little nervous. Uh, especially being that iRacing is a DX9 game, um, newer peripherals coming out are not really gonna work out of the box. Um, I know a lot of people got the DK2 working and there's a way to basically hack this into the Oculus programming. So I should be able to get it to work. And a lot of people that have reviewed this headset say that it is of a better experience than the DK2. So we'll see, we'll see. I'll definitely post my experiences. Um, I'm not sure if this is gonna make me sell my triple screen monitors. Uh, I'm kind of hoping, <laughs> especially being that the screens in the headset are upgradable. Um, but I, I'm a big, uh, pusher towards VR. I just, with, you know, with my expectations and my, I, I, the Oculus, I'm just going to go into this real quick because the biggest thing was the Oculus price. I do believe it is worth every penny of that $600. And I do believe the HTC Vive is going to be considerably more. Um, especially with newer technology, you know, with cell phones. Look at how much cell phones cost if you just buy them out on your own. Um, so I do believe it's worth every penny. I just don't feel ready to pay that much yet. So this is basically a way of me getting my feet wet into VR and also kind of staying cautious and seeing where VR actually goes in the gaming community. Um, I'm sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to do real well, but... I'm kind of curious to see if the hype's going to kind of go away or if um, adoption's not really going to be as big as what they're expecting. I'm sure it's going to be huge, but I'm going to wait for those prices to come down. Or if they do come out with additional screens for this, I'm going to just upgrade my kit here. But so next we have the power brick. So this power brick here, um, it looks like a scaled down laptop power brick. Um, got off in the tangent there before. <laughs> Sorry about that. But this power brick here, uh, if, if you've ever seen like in Walmart or in Fry's or any of those, you know, big box stores, how they sell those like battery, um, those little battery packs for your cell phone so you could charge it on the go, those little backup battery packs. It's kind of like the size of it, of I would say like the 10,000 milliamp um, power brick. So, you know, kind of small, pretty light, has a cable on it. No big deal. It's not heavy, um, but it doesn't feel like a piece of junk at the same time. So next is the power cable that goes from that to the wall. And this is pretty thick. This is probably where it's going to get its weight from. So I'm sure you're not going to want that swinging in the air or anything like that. All right. Next we have a makeup kit, you know, so you could 
brush on some VR powder. No, I'm kidding. Ah, and then I throw it. Okay. It, if I had to guess, is a means of cleaning your lenses, cleaning the dust off your lenses. It's a soft brush here, and then you could also squeeze it and some air comes through the brushes. So especially being that you could take the front cover off, uh, which exposes the circuit boards and the other side of the lenses, I'm sure that's why they're including this, because they know that dust is going to be a little bit of an issue, and if they made it sealed, wouldn't be as much of an issue on the front side of the lenses, but being that you can open it, you can hack it, you can kind of upgrade it, it's going to be an issue. So they included the brush. Um, I'm sure a lot of the VR headsets are coming with some sort of cleaning cloth or brushes, but pretty neat, pretty neat, especially being that you could squeeze it and kind of get a jet of air out of it, clean the dust off. You don't have to spray anything in there, especially being that there's going to be circuit boards exposed. They don't want that. So we also have this uh, wiring harness here. Kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's probably the power adapter for the IR blaster. I mean the IR camera. Um, it's there's a few different things going on here. It looks like you have a power connection. It looks like there's an extension port on this side. And then back in this corner here you have like an eight millimeter headphone jack. So I'm not exactly sure where this splitter thing is going to go to. Probably the one for the belt box and one to the power cable and maybe one to the IR camera. I'm not sure. I'm confused, but I'm sure it's in that quick start guide, so. Ah! Took my, took my mic off. We're gonna roll with it. <laughs> I'm only unboxing this thing once because I wanna get this thing together. All right, and then we have the HDMI to Bluetooth connection. And this end here, if you're, if you're a Samsung Galaxy S5 owner, look at that. What is that there? That's our charger head. So it's a Bluetooth charger head. It's a, like a micro USB to Bluetooth connection. And then there's also an HDMI. So I'm gonna have to disconnect one of my monitors to get this to work, which is fine. I don't mind at all, because I have all my monitors connected. I have an R9 290X Tri-X 8 gigabyte from Sapphire. So in the back, there's only four. Um, video outputs out unless you get like a um, I think it's a display port adapter that enables you to use six monitors but right now I have four monitors and they're all plugged into the four available ports so um, and then on the other side of that cable you have an HDMI and then you have a USB 3.0 cable so I'm gonna have to get this all figured out pretty thick harness you know I'm actually pretty impressed by it it's all braided cable um, Feels like I won't break it. Again, I am pretty abusive of my equipment. I don't mean to be. I don't just start lashing on things. It's just, I tend to be rough sometimes, uh, especially if I'm frustrated. You know, things, things happen. So, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Now for the moment, I'm shaking a little bit. I've been waiting for the headset. Oh my gosh. Now, I just got to show you the way that they package this everything that I just took out of the box was in this cubby all right look at that headset it just looks like random plastic inside of a bed of foam I mean there's foam here and I think this is what goes against your face look how thick that is and then there's foam all the way around here so it's it's packaged pretty good you got foam up here this you know foam in my hair and this foam falling out of the sky so foam everywhere so yeah, let's take this out. Let's see if I can do it like this. All right. I might, I might make like a travel case. I mean, this is kind of a, a case, but I might make like a little wooden travel case. Kind of put that in there. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Already cut the size. Let's get this down out of the way. There's nothing else left in the box. And here we are, the Razer OS VR headset. Now look how pretty that is. It is, um, it's all black in the front. I'm only doing this on camera because I love you people. Because I love you. Let's peel this off. So that way you can actually see what it looks like in the front.
All right, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now onto there, there's uh, IR LEDs that are going to basically shine through the cover and um, go to the IR camera. Oh, I got this stuff stuck to my arm. On this side, uh, what is that? That looks like a, an additional USB. And that's the other thing with this headset too. There's upgradability. On the bottom you can see basically for focal alignment. Now from what I remember hearing, they don't allow um, IPD adjustment as far as side to side. They are using fairly large lenses. I mean, I have a Homido for my cell phone. Um, and just, all right, I guess that foam is not what goes to your face. I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> in a sense I'm kind of relieved because this foam is kind of ridiculous um, but just looking at the lenses I mean they're monstrous it looks like one of the one of the lens covers itself just fell off so at least you could see the lenses but look how big that is that is huge let me see if my homido is around here somewhere so I could show you real quick. I could have sworn it was. It's kind of sad, but this is how much I'm a kind of like a DIY type person for uh, VR. I have a Samsung Galaxy X5, and one of the main reasons why I have that cell phone is one of the only cell phones that use USB 3.0. So I was hoping that with this, this is my Homido, that I could kind of do like Trinus VR or some other DIY Oculus program and basically get it working in a lag free sort of environment. The problem is there was still too much data coming through that line um, because I did it uh, through USB tether which is the most recommended way of doing it. Um, I had to scale back the graphics settings to make it run fairly smooth and it was to the point where it was Unjoyable, unenjoyable and there was really not a good sense of 3d immersion unless you bought and purchased a program like tridev 3d and that made it work but then again because it's using some of your cpu i would have to scale back my graphic settings a little bit and it just was really pixelated and just unenjoyable um, if i cranked the settings all the way up to 1080p uh, it looked gorgeous. It was absolutely beautiful of a picture, but it was so laggy and so behind my inputs as far as sim racing goes. It, it just kind of knocked you right out of the immersion and uh, it really was unenjoyable. So, but you could see inside, those are the lenses for the Homido. I mean, this is really a good headset. I'm probably going to list it online for sale because I didn't really get to use it all that much, as much as I thought I would. Um, with this one here, you do have adjustments. Uh, for uh, your focal distance but you can see the size difference when it comes from just like a, a cell phone Homido. Now the, the Homido is uh, a quality unit. It's pretty pricey. It's around a hundred bucks. Um, I got it for a little bit less than that because I, I got it for a good deal. Got it on sale but it is a pretty sizable unit. It's about the size of I would say like the Gear VR minus the well if you kind of count that little front point where your cell phone will go into um but yeah you know it's a pretty sizable unit but you can see how much bigger this is um also this is a little bit heavier actually i'm i'm surprised because my cell phone's not even in this one this one is not much heavier um it feels like a lot more higher quality uh, this feels, uh, of course, like the real deal, whereas this one kind of feels like you can hear it shaking. That's a Homido. Hopefully you can hear that. You don't really hear anything with this one at all. But you can kind of see, let me try to hold this in such a way that should be visible. Kind of see how much bigger the lenses are. That's that's the uh, the OSVR, and you can kind of see that is the Homido. Look how much bigger those lenses are. Now the lenses that are in the Homido are close to size of the Gear VR, um, <laughs> and it's just astounding. Now that there will only help with the um, 
the FOV in the game. Now there are 150 degree FOV lenses that are being produced right now by Razer, but look at that. That is, let me hold them even, that is pretty big difference there. Insane, insane. So we're going to take that other cover off. I think it just falls off or just twists off. There you go. Just a very thin sort of like plastic cover. And there you go. So there's really not much else to show you. Um, but that is the Razer OS VR. So definitely uh, <laughs> give this a thumbs up if you liked it. I tried to be as in-depth as possible. Uh, because there's not much information on this online. I am so surprised that there's not much more uh, people adopting this besides developers um, to try to check it out and get their feet wet into VR because Razer is really pushing this to be uh, not only a developer's kit but also just a means of trying it out. Uh, I think it's the... By the way, I'm holding the belt box. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that real quick. I almost forgot to do that, but Razer kind of wants people that are keen into tweaking and getting things working. So I think that's scaring a lot of people away. A lot of people looking for an out of the box experience. But us PC gamers, we're used to tweaking and we're used to getting things to work. We're used to modifying settings, you know, graphical settings and whatnot. Um, us in the sim racing community, we're pretty darn resourceful. Um, a lot of us have issues with drivers. You know, we plug in different pedals to the wheels and getting things working. So I don't think this is going to be that far out of a, you know, that realm of tweaking uh, to getting things working. But this is the belt box. You can see it has a little clip on there to basically go in your belt loop or your pants. Uh, on the top, you have a USB, you have a headphone jack. Um, it actually has a built-in sound card for surround sound. So if you just have, you know, headphones that use an 8mm jack, you can plug it in there and kind of get the experience. And you can see the USB 3.0 um, cable, but it's kind of like the charger for our Galaxy uh, Razer there. And then on this side, you have the HDMI. Hopefully I'm holding that where you can see it. Uh, again, this is the power cable side, and then you have, oh, maybe that's where the USB 3.0 cable goes in. Um, I'm not sure what that rate, what that slip is for, but, uh, I'm sure it's something on the wiring harness that I gotta, I gotta check out, but we're gonna get this going. There's gonna be a heck of a lot of videos coming out with me using this and giving you my opinions, my thoughts. Um, again, this is, uh. This is the Razer OS VR, and it's a you know pretty cheap unit. It's 300 bucks, 299.99, um, and right now Razer is doing free shipping of everything over 45 bucks. Um, again, I submitted my order almost almost three days ago, and I used just a free standard shipping of three to five days, and I got it in three days. So pretty insane. Stay tuned. Again, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, subscribe for more videos that are going to come out using VR or my triple screen setup. Thank you. Have a great day. See you all out on the track.